Hello, my name is Darrell Boyd and I work as a Beef and Sheep Advisor with CAFRI. And today I am delivering this short discussion on AI breeding within the suckler herd. Joining me today is Oliver McKenna from Escra County Tyrone, who is a member of the Better Farms Beef Challenge NI. And we're going to talk about the use of AI on his own farm. So thank you very much for participating today, Oliver. And before we get to the main topic of the discussion today, which is AI and breeding, could you give those listening a brief history of your farm within the program from the position back in 2013 to where you are today? Right. Um, we came into the program calving around 30 to 35 cows, running stock bulls, and uh, we'd have been selling some stores late spring the store bullocks and at that stage we would have been trying to keep most of heifers to build up build up herd numbers. Uh, target was sixty cows. Um when we when we started in the programme set out a plan, a target of getting to sixty cows and we, we would be sitting at that now with cows calving half and half spring and autumn and would be using a hundred percent AA. All meals would be finished as young bulls and we would be selling some surplus heifers for as breeding stock. Um, financially, Oliver, you know, the, what was the target that would have been set in the programme for you to, to achieve at the start in terms of gross margin? Originally, the target was £750 a hectare and um, we, we managed to achieve that okay, and then now we'd be we'd be aiming for a thousand pound a hectare. Uh, very good, Oliver, and that's what the graphic on on the screen is displaying. It's showing some of the key performance indicators from your annual benchmarking results, and as you mentioned, cow numbers have nearly doubled over the last six years, and gross margin per hectare has risen from four hundred and twelve back in 2013 there to 963 uh, pounds in 2019 and over a thousand pounds in 2017 so you've you've hit both targets that you spoke about there i suppose that's not uh reflective of any single change in your farm it's taken a number of different aspects working together to deliver that margin can you just outline some of the big changes on your own farm over the last last you know five to six years Oliver? Well, I suppose the basic thing you start with the soil, soil fertility. And, uh, we would we would have took soil samples and, and tried to improve the soil fertility, and then we would have set up paddocks. All the stock would have been grazed in paddocks to to make better use of the more grass that you're growing, uh, and then. You needed more stock, so the two things goes hand in hand. Uh, the more grass is no good if you don't have the stock needed, and you need the stock to turn the grass into money. Um, but I suppose with with using the AI, would have better quality stock. Um, and then with uh, with stocking rates increasing so much, we had to keep keep a good control on animal health. So it was about taking a, a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach and trying to prevent prevent sickness but, but you know using vaccines instead of trying to cure illness. Um even mineral status, a taking samples and, and making sure that we had minerals covered for whatever the cows and stock was lacking in. And I suppose pretty much is about leaving as little things as possible to chance. That's the same on, on any farm, Oliver. It's a, it's a whole farm plan approach and working towards a system and making sure that all of those things that you're doing is working together to, to, to deliver the one goal. So, Oliver, as you said, you operate a closed herd policy now and you've went 100% AA. And really, you've you've two objectives in your breeding decisions, and they're firstly to breed replacements for your own herd, but 
but also along with that you still need a sellable boot a sellable bull calf from your system yeah. um that's going to hit the market spec the top priority is having good quality replacements and I suppose that comes from over the years trying to build no numbers and, and uh, always looking for heifers and I suppose the bulls started out sort of a byproduct but like if you look at uh, 2019 average for the all the bulls was 377 kilos at around 15 months um, there would have been mostly U grades with maybe a few R pluses so basically if if, you, if the breeding in the cow is right and, and you keep improving the breeding in the cow, the, the, the threats will come through in the bulls and you'll have improved performance in the bulls as well. And that's what your figures are starting to, to show as well, Oliver. Um, so, but why why not just throw in a breeding bull, Oliver? Uh, there's, a, there's a few reasons for that. Now, um, I'll be trying to make the most of hybrid figure on uh, crisscrossing breeds and I'd be I'd be getting a good boost there from crossing continental breeds with traditional breeds um, and it's, it's about making sure you're using good quality bulls no matter what the breed is. Uh, on top of that, when you have uh, using stock bulls you're very limited to whatever that bull is and it's very hard to to have a bull that suits everything. I'd be using maybe four different breeds and a few different bulls within the breeds. You can access maybe really good bulls that you couldn't otherwise afford to buy. And you can pick bulls for specific cows as such as well, Oliver? That's right. And you'll always find you'll have a cow and you'll maybe decide I don't really want to keep a replacement out of her and you can put something on her that that'll not that'll maybe suit a different job or a more terminal uh, type animal. That's right, die. Uh, so I suppose, Oliver, if you're looking to breed your own replacements, we kinda need to have a few targets of what an ideal cow should be. We mentioned earlier the importance of increasing stocking rate. But before that, I think it's most important to maximise output per cow, then look at how you can maximise the amount of cows through better grassland management and other things. There's no doubting for me that fertility and having a calf per cow per year is the king of all traits in a suckler cow. Um, what do you say yourself, Oliver, about the ideal cow for your farm? I'd agree that uh, fertility and having a calf every year is is very important all right uh, for me you now what I want is a cow that calves easily so she has to have good calving ability that she goes back in calves so that's the fertility um, she has to do a good job in rearing the calf and ideally I want her to go into the house with a bit of flesh in her back so that she's very easy kept over the winter two, two of the targets we would be using to, to, I suppose, take a measure of, of how the cows are doing is a calving index, and you'd be aiming for a calving index of 365 days. It basically means that the average of your cows have calved within 365 days of the previous time they calved. Yeah. And the other, other thing would be would be the weaning percentage. So you'd be taking a... a uh, an adjusted weight at, of 200 days and you'd be targeting 50% of the cow's weight at the, the calves weight at 200 days old. So uh, that's the calves weight divided by the, the cow's weight, the calves weight at 200 days and we're wanting as close to 50% as we can. And that's in theory going to be a reflection of her milk production and growth potential she's given the calf. Any other factors, Oliver, there that you're looking at in an ideal cow? Well, you, you need, uh, you know, good feet and um, don't want her too big that, that she's going to be very hard to win there. Uh, I suppose on a thing that is, is, is very important is uh, the facility of the cow. You, you don't want something that's mad. 
dangerous. Yeah. And uh, I suppose it's a never-ending task trying to, to breed the ideal suckler cow, but as I say, the, the two big ones there is, is, is fertility and milk um, and Cavanese, as you say. Oliver, there's four main breeds that you've used historically on farm. That's Limousin, Samantal, Angus and Hereford. Most cattle are some sort of mixture of continental and traditional breeding. Can you just outline what the kind of breeding strategy is on farm in terms of breed to breed? So basically what we're doing is uh, most of the cows, if they're not a Samatol, they get a Samatol bull and the Samatol cows get a limousine bull. There would be a few cows picked there that might get a Hereford bull. Most of the heifers would be getting an Angus bull and the only exception would be if I had Angus or Hereford bred heifers, I'd be putting Slayer on them. The traditional breeding is, I suppose, kept trickling through at a low level that, you know, it, it wouldn't be just 50% of the cow, but we keep breeding heifers to that. So we're using a certain amount to try and keep a bit of traditional breeding in the cows. Yeah, and I suppose, Oliver, the picture that's on the screen there, that's a picture of, for for you, the ideal cow for your farm um, that you've bred yourself there. Do you want to say anything about about her? Well, the, the, I suppose it's very hard to nail down what's ideal or, or if you love her, reach perfection, but that there is a samatal cow out of a samatal Samuel Bull of a Hereford cow, and uh, she's uh, she she carries a bit of flesh on her back, and she's doing a good job on her calves. She has a fairy drop of milk, and and she seems to go back in calf. So, I suppose fertility is back to the flesh on her back. The, the most important thing will be the energy balance. And if she's bare, it's going to be very difficult to get back in calve. Yeah. And if she's in good condition and, and increasing in condition when you're trying to pull her, there's much more likelihood that you will go back in calve. And I suppose there, at the start, Oliver, what you said, you know, what's ideal on one farm is not a necessarily ideal on all farms you have to be breeding uh, a cow that suits your own farm okay so oliver there's obviously a cost of aa and we want it to be as successful as possible you've been aa in this number of years so we just find what's working well on your farm from your own experience so if you look at the autumn herd first of all you know what kind of what time of year are you breeding there um, and when do you want to be finished by yeah, we're, we're breeding from mid-October up to Christmas, basically. Um, That's your cut-off uh, point? Aye, uh, and we, we like to cut them off pretty sharp because we'd be giving them a bit of meal while breeding goes on, you know. <laughs> you just want to keep it as tight and as short a period of time as possible. Yeah, and are you, start, are you still at grass when you're breeding those cows in mid-October or do you try to have them all housed and saddled before you start breeding, Oliver? Oh, I housed... Um, because normally in October, you, you, where we are, you wouldn't you wouldn't get through October, and you'll find that cows will lose condition a sort of quicker than you realise, and you'll be a long time getting them up and going again. Basically, them autumn cows are housed by the first of October, so that they have two weeks settled in on their feet before we start breeding any of them at all. Yeah, yeah, and then. Once they're in the house, Oliver, nutrition ways, are they getting the best silage in the farm or what's the crap carry on there? Uh, best silage, best silage available and um, we would we would give them about a kilo and a half a meal along with the silage just for that, that period while we were breeding them and they would be getting minerals as well just to uh, try and make sure no one's left to chance them. And, and in all likelihood they'll hold. And so the males cut off them essentially once breeding season is finished. In in the house, Oliver, what is your heat detection? Is it solely just watching them a couple of times a day or what do you do? I um 
mostly mostly depending on on observing. Um, this year, this year in the house, they actually showed very good heats. From years, maybe not as good, but we, we got on pretty well. Now um, we divided up the both first and second calvers, and we used a bit of crane marking on them because they wouldn't have just maybe shown a stronger heats. And did you find uh, that help, uh, Oliver? There was a help, you know, um, gain indication there. I suppose keeping those first calvers and second calvers away from the mature cows maybe stopped a bit of bullying too, maybe that might go on. That's right. Um, I would have found they were maybe getting a bit intimidated by the more mature cows, even though all had feet space, if you know what I mean. Finding them harder to get back in calve now, so this year I divided them up. Definitely found it a good job now. That's good. Um, and that's your first year using the crayons on the heifers or such, but normally it's just... Um, observation and you have cameras in the house there too. You've invested in lock and feed gates as well, Oliver. Is that just to minimise stress taking them out? Well, it was sort of uh, by default. When I divided them up, I wasn't going to be fit of take one out of it to get them to the cross. So I put in lock and feed gates for them first and second calvers, and uh, I definitely found it good job now and uh, much reduced stress that when you go to feed them in the morning if you, you your heat detection done that night just set the feed gates to lock you had no problems getting them out both from a labour point of view and stress on the animal and stress on yourself I definitely find them a great help and what about the springtime uh, Oliver I know this is maybe a wee bit early talking about AI this presentation but People need to be starting to look really about AI stores and getting bulls in that they want. So, you know, breeding time again, what sort of um, time frame do you have there for the spring herd? We'll be starting in mid May till July. That's them. Um, so, that's your two breeding windows. Cows at springtime, grass only diet. Uh, do, you, do you carry minerals to them or mineral buckets or do you bolus them? What do you do there, Oliver? Oh, you would just be using the bucket legs. That's the minerals. That's we would be supplying the minerals till the, the spring cows now. And what about uh, heat detection when they're at grass, Oliver? Is it the same as in the house? Is it mainly just uh, observation, or do you use any systems that's available? I uh, just observed heats. Um, try and go out early in the morning. If I thought there was a cow coming on, Early in the morning, I would maybe try and get back in the middle of the day to see. And then I would find a really good time to get cows is just before dark. You'd, you'd find cows standing about in a bunch of chewing their cud, and if there's a cow bone, you'd, you'd normally see her then. What about, Oliver, when you're, when you're at grass, this might be something that would put a lot of people off from trying AI or getting into AI. How do you find bringing them in? Do you have good laneways? Do you need good infrastructure for AI? Well, I suppose you need a certain level. Um, I think one of the advantages would be with grazing the cows in the paddocks and the soil used to electric fencers, we can sort of set them up anywhere. I would I would use a big reel there and I could divide off a cow or I have one bit of a laneway and Pretty much if you get a cow to that, just... Uh, everything works to that lane way as such. Uh, um, and I suppose the paddock grazing, you know, where they're being moved every couple of days really lends itself to AA in anyway because they're getting used to being moved anyway. Oliver? That's, that's, that's right, darling. And I would always find there, if, if they need moved, it's an ideal time to, to take, move them out, you know... To count the cows that need AI, you know, <laughs> yeah, at yeah. that time. Um, Oliver, come to the spring time, you're AI Do you ever intervene? Do you ever use synchronization, or do you ever use any drugs there? What's what's the story there? Um, basically, what we would do would AI four to five weeks, and then you'll have picked up what's not what's not been bred at that stage. Give them a give them a pre scan because sometimes some of them don't need that much, and then you'll have cows that there's maybe nothing wrong with. They're not maybe cycling, and they need a bit of a synchronisation program to get them going. So that's basically what we do, and it keeps them from slipping because we try to keep a good type calving pattern there. 
And I would find that lends itself to the AI in because if they care tight, you'll have, you'll have cows looking them, you know, in heat, and pretty in, tight. Coming in together and, and, and cows more, bringing each other on. more cows you have coming on together, the more activity you'll have and it's much easier to pick them up. Yeah. So you'd say, as much as anything, a tight calving pattern helps? Definitely, AI. definitely, because it, it also means that when you have the first three weeks done, you'll have, you'll have a lot of them picked up. You, you'll, you'll have then also a date for when a cow should be repeating, if she's going to repeat. So mm. if you get through the first three weeks, you have the bulk of it over you, whereas the more spread out your calving pattern is, it's very hard to keep it going. Yeah. All the heat detection. So on to looking at what bull you actually choose to to use on the farm, Oliver. And the one good thing about AI is you have an awful lot of information there behind the bull coming from the bull's parents and also uh, his progeny on the ground. What we have on the screen here is really the beef Eurostar profile of a, a Samantil bull you would use quite regularly on your own farm. Now, as yourself, as a commercial farmer, Oliver, what do you look at? Um, we'll talk it through here in different steps, but what do you look at um, when it comes to the figures here? To start off, you have the, on the top left there, you have the star written, broke it down into replacement and terminal. And you can see this boy is five star replacement and five star terminal, but you can maybe have a, a bull that's five star replacement and only one star terminal, that means this boy will produce good replacements, but he's also a good beef producing animal, which works it works well for me for finishing bulls. Sorry, so this fella could essentially be described as a, a dual purpose a dual purpose bull on paper and really each star what it's representing is that that animal sits where that animal sits within the breed. So a five-star bull is sitting in the top 20%, whereas one star means he's sitting in the bottom 20%. So just below that, um, Oliver, with the calving difficulty, um, what does that figure actually mean there? You know, we have two figures there, beef heifers, beef cows, and then a value of 7% and 3.5%. What, what does that mean, and what do you look for um, in terms of calving difficulty? So it, it basically is a score of the the amount of problems they've had. So if you take their seven percent for beef heifers, well that would mean out of all the beef heifers recorded calves out of this bull, seven percent of them were in what they call category three and four. Now the calves are all scored from one to five. One being the cow calf herself. Two being um, should some assistance. Three uh, would be mechanical assistance or, or considerable difficulty, and four was the vet assistance. Right. So it basically means that 7% of the calves had either mechanical assistance or vet assistance. So, so the, lower, the lower that figure, yeah, the yeah. easier the bull is to calve. So... Um, um, you can see on cows there was less difficulty than on than on heifers. And I suppose all of for all of these figures, you know, we're looking for as high uh, index reliability as we can. And what would you be looking for above eighty percent or above fifty percent, ideally um, as high as possible? You want above eighty percent. There's one. There's one particular one. Uh, if I'm looking a bull to put on heifers, I want the accuracy to be above ninety percent. Oliver, to the right of the screen, I suppose as we're looking at it here, um, that's indicating the likely performance of the progeny of this bull, and especially at the bottom and the, the very top right, to do with the the, the daughters or females, as, as far as we're concerned, the daughter breeding performance. Do you take much heed of these figures as well, Oliver, in terms of um, the milk and the solidity? Yes. Pay pay good attention to them. Um, 
the first thing I look at is the calf and if the bull's too hard to calf, I won't use them. Then I look I look for daughter milk. So this this bull is very good daughter milk at thirteen. Um accuracy just wouldn't be that high yet, but but it'll, 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 take, to be, it'll take longer for you to get a high accuracy bull for milk, Oliver. Yeah, because you won't really know till there's daughters on the ground for a period of time. Yeah. Um, and then you look at the carcass traits. It's fairly good carcass weight. Um, well, we can see there he's, he's five star, both within the Samuel breed and the cross all breed. So, um, yeah, with a very high reliability, reliability as well. Slightly maybe lacking in carcass confirmation, Oliver, but you're not too concerned with that. I'd be using limousine bowls and they'll, they'll average that out, don't know if you know what I mean. The, the, only, the only thing I would say there, I'd be using Angus bowls on heifers. And you need to, you need to keep a wee eye on the, the carcass weight for them and make sure that it is having a reasonably good positive figure for carcass weight because there would be some... Really easy calved Angus bulls, but they could have a negative, they could have a negative carcass weight figure, which will have poor quality calves. It just won't put on as much weight, and yeah. you don't want to be doing that either. And it's not something you really want in cows. Is breeding suckler cows that are you know negative for carcass weight. Again, it goes back to the the beauty of AI being able to pick specific bulls for specific animals in your farm, Oliver. That's right. Yeah. Well, Oliver, we need performance. Um, I, I suppose it's all right using AA, but we need to be getting the performance from it. Uh, one of those things that we look at, uh, typical scanning rate for a suckler cow system that we want or that we're aiming for is about 95%, but we need to be at least in 90 to 95%. And to get that, we need to be getting at least 65% to a conception to first service over the years Oliver how have you found that with AA or going AA entirely are you able to achieve that um, we, we would be consistently hitting that 90 to 95% and I uh, was just checking over the past couple of years conception to first service was sitting at 75% so you're above and beyond what we'd actually be targeting or maybe expecting um what what does that work out um per straw ways uh per cow oliver i something about 1.4 straws used per cow scanned and calf and that would include you know maybe cows that repeated three times or cows that didn't go and calf whatever straw so 1.4 used for Every for each cow scan and calf. No, well, that's very good. And conception, the first service of 75% is going to be as good as most bulls. Uh, is it working in terms of what we're doing or what you're doing, sorry, Oliver, on farm? You know, we're back to your own judgment for starters. Do you think it's getting better? Do you think your cows are getting better on on farm? And then again, we've got our three targets that we talked about earlier on. Carcass gains per day, weaning percentage, calving index, what are they like on farm, Oliver? Yeah, uh, average carcass gain, daily carcass gain on the bulls in 2019 is 0.83 kilos per day. Uh, calving index average over the past three years is 369, so we're not that far away with that. And um, would be would be normally hitting the weaning percentage there around 45%. We're trying to get Trying to, you know, the target's 50, but it's, it's, it's a hard enough target to have what we're getting there, like. Yeah, well, certainly from looking from figures from a number of different farms, the weaning percentage is very difficult to achieve at 50%, Oliver, but those are fantastic figures there, and clearly the, the AI is starting to shine through on your farm. Um, pregnancy diagnosis is another big thing on farm, and you should be doing that at least six Weeks after breeding, um, conception should be showing up at that stage, and that's something that you're doing, Oliver, and you're getting rid of those uh, cows that are, are problem cows and not holding uh, to service. Um, finally, Oliver, you know, 
you did say at the start in 2013 you were using stock bulls. Now you're 100 percent AA. How do you get to that? I'm sure you wouldn't advise anybody to go out tomorrow morning and sell a bull and go into AA entirely. Yeah, I suppose the first the first year we we sort of said we'll go we'll go for a first round here and see how it goes. And uh, then as that as that went all right, the the, the aim was to get as many of them in Kiev to AA as possible. And after a few years like we we kept the ball on farm to to sweep up on that, but I think the last year he bought two or three cows. So at that stage, it wasn't wasn't viable to keep a ball to bowl two or three cows. And if I if I'd have just went for one more run, I might have caught some of them. Anyway, thanks very much uh, for taking the time uh, and doing this today with us. No, no problem. Thank you, Dart. Uh, we hope you get on. The, the very best with uh, the breeding season to come. Thank you. And finally, to summarise, as outlined, AA can bring many benefits to a circular herd. For successful AA, ensure cows are in the correct body condition score and are in a rising plane of nutrition in the run up to and during the breeding season. As discussed by Oliver, high conception rates to first service can still be achieved by a simple observational methods for heat detection. Good infrastructure, both in the winter and the springtime, can help keep both farmer and cow calm during the breeding season. And finally, when selecting bulls, try to use those bulls that are proven with high reliability figures for accurate results. Thank you for listening. We hope you found this discussion useful and please tune in again. Thank you.